I want to welcome everybody um, to this group. Um, my name is Ken Masson. Um, once again, if you um, are new to the group and there are several new people here, please um, put your information in the in the chat. Um, and also, if you wanted to also share your email, we'll make sure you're on our mailing list um, from here on. Um, <clears throat> I am. Um, I am the um, a, a couple of, of uh, positions here that uh, I represent. Um, I'm a president of a club called the Rotary Club of World Disability Advocacy. Um, we're a club that's international and we work on human rights for people with disabilities around the world. Um, and we're represented right now in about 10 different countries. Um, and um, and uh, I'm proud to be that. We're just actually just coming up on our one year anniversary of the club. Um, also, um, and Tom was very instrumental in, in helping us get that club started. Um, and um, also um, I am a, a chair of a group called the Rotary Disability Advisors Group, which is kind of what this group came out of. This group is a committee of, of that group. Um, and that group basically was formed to try to bring more attention to uh, awareness to uh, disabilities um, uh, with Rotary in the in the in the in the hope for uh, in bringing uh, bring uh, increasing awareness in the hope to um, um, bring a more accessibility and inclusion for people with disabilities in Rotary and obviously increase the, the numbers of people with disabilities in Rotary. So um, this group is a, a somewhat of a, a Rotary based group. Um, the, the need for this group, I'm going to, um, uh, we, we identify a need for this group and I'm going to kind of turn to John for that to talk about what we've, we started to talk about, why is there a need for a post polio syndrome group. Uh, John, I'm gonna turn it to you for a few minutes. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, well, having given over 350 polio talks to Rotary clubs and districts and zones and things like that, uh, a few things stand out for me. Um, although Rotarians are very dedicated to eradicating polio, most know very little about polio and most know nothing about post-polio syndrome. Um, one of the symptoms of post-polio uh, syndrome is fatigue, um, overwhelming fatigue. Uh, but there's another fatigue associated with polio. That's rotary polio fatigue. We've been doing this for over 35 years. And I think um, many Rotarians have not, they've lost or don't understand the reasons why we're trying to eradicate polio. Bill Gates recently wrote that we are in the last stages of eradicating polio, but the last mile is the hardest. Um, I strongly feel that we must bring awareness of what polio survivors live through every day to Rotarians so they understand why we need to eradicate polio and why we need to look in, in the future to help those polio survivors that we missed with vaccinations and who will, uh, you know, they would suffer their whole life with post polio syndrome. The other area that this group uh, can bring awareness to is healthcare professionals. Back in 1992, I was having a lot of problems and had no idea what was causing the problems. It took uh, 10 doctors in two years to diagnose my post polio syndrome most of them never having seen a polio survivor. Uh, this group can educate Rotarians and healthcare professionals on post polio syndrome and help reduce the long-term effects of this horrible disease called polio. And so it, I feel this group can help in a uh, multitude of uh, ways, uh, bringing awareness of why we're eradicating polio and how we can help those who we've missed uh, and who are who 20 to 30 to 40 years after having the original polio bout, um, will a good about 70 percent of them that were paralyzed will have post polio syndrome in some, one level or, or another. So it's very important to 
bring this out. And I think this group can do a really good job, uh, especially how we're so represented worldwide with this group uh, already and only in a couple of months. So, uh, and Ken's done a great job of bringing people together. I think that's, he's a master of that. And uh, I think um, whether, oops, whether we, um, you know, uh, partner up with the uh, polio survivor RAG group or start a fellowship, not sure which direction we're gonna go to, but uh, I also don't believe in reinventing the wheel. So I'd like to use, uh, bring this message out. So uh, uh, that's pretty much uh, why we really need to do this. Ken, it's all yours. Thank you, John. Um, and it's, um, it's become, um, uh, uh, I'm not sure what the word is, um, um, eye-opening. Uh, that there, there's so uh, for, for, for that there, there's so little knowledge of post polio syndrome um, and among uh, even people who have polio. There's little knowledge about about family members who have people with polio. Um, uh, in the medical profession, where uh, kind of uh, there is a, a, a huge misunderstanding of people who have post polio syndrome. Um, and there, the, in the therapist's area, there is a misunderstanding of people who have post polio syndrome. Um, and, um, and those people in particular having, um, having a misunderstanding of it, uh, as John has educated me on, is making the situation worse, making the situation worse for people. Um, and, um, so it's extremely important that we increase the awareness on this very serious issue. Awareness uh, that can better not only the people who are dealing with it at this point, um, but also uh, the people who potentially will deal with it in the future. Um, we have almost two worlds in this situation. We have a world of uh, areas such in, as, as in North, uh, in North America where it, it was eradicated years ago and most of the people are older people. Um, but we have an a, a area of, in India where they're talking about 4 million people with polio. In Africa where there are younger people that have polio and need to understand that this is a potential that needs to be dealt with. Um, and so um, there's a lot of awareness that needs to be done on this whole issue. And that's the, 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 the premise of this group. We're not supposedly going to be a support group um, because there are support groups out there, but we're going to encourage people to go to those support groups. Our focus will be awareness of the issues on it. And why Rotary? Uh, well, there's many reasons we would turn to Rotary for, for to help us get this word out. Um, and people in this group do not have to be Rotarians. And, that, and one of the reasons we brought Tom into is trying to figure out where we can go in Rotary with this. But Rotary, one point, what is it, Tom, one point, they say now 1.4 million people, right? Yeah, 1.4 million people in Rotary around the world, almost in every country around the world. As I have worked on this disability group, I, can, I know the power of Rotary. I know how we can reach Rotary around the world very quickly. So it's a tremendous tool for us to use. In addition, Rotary itself has a compassion for people, has a compassion for the community and for, has a compassion for helping people. So it, it has the service above self. It has that basis that would make a good uh, networking group for us. Um, and, and thirdly, Rotary is always, and God bless Rotary for working on eradicating polio. God, God bless them. The world is a better world because of the work that Rotary has done in that. And, uh, and it also, so it already has a passion for helping people with polio. So it makes a lot of sense to use Rotary as our base. Um, and um, so, uh, what, what we're where we're at with that is that, and in Rotary also, one of the things we've identified, obviously, is the medical community, the therapists around the world, those people who are already uh, dealing with polio, family members, 
those people are already in Rotary. That group is already in Rotary. And Rotary can help us um, by being advocates themselves. If we can get advocates around the world to spread this world, then we're going to, 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 to spread it quicker and, and so forth. But, and, and I'm saying that we certainly do not want to just be a group of Rotarians. We wanna be a group of people that have a passion for this subject and have an interest in the subject and have an interest in making the uh, people with post-polio syndrome have a, a better life. So we would welcome anybody into this group. Um, and the other focus we're gonna look at is collaborating with, um, with other groups that are doing this kind of work also. Um, is there anybody here from the Australian group? No. Well, there is a, a great Australian group that we've been talking with. Is there somebody here from the European group? Okay, I guess they're not here. They were going to come. So there are groups like that. We're going to we're going to collaborate. Marlin's with. here, Ken, from the European group. Oh, Ken. Yes. That's hey. Me, me. Nice. I'm nice to see you, John. Um, John, um, you uh, can you tell me from Long Beach, California. Ah, nice to see you. Uh, got a good example for you. The uh, Rancho Los Amigos National Rehabilitation Center no longer has post polio as part of their mission. So they only have one doctor, one day a month or Friday, available for post polio patients to see. Ah. And that is a National Rehabilitation Center. Wow. That gives you some example of how post-polio has fallen off just about every medical screen in the country. So that's yeah. just an example. Yeah, John, you have your hand up. Ken, can I come in here? Yeah, um, go ahead, John. The, the European group, we've got 27 support groups about 20 countries, 496,000 members. I remember you wondering, you sent out an email a little while ago saying, was it still active? Uh, very much so is the answer. The, uh, we've also organized conferences in Copenhagen, Amsterdam, and uh, in uh, Sydney. We worked with the Sydney group and did their conference in 2016. We're now, we're now arranging another one in the north of Spain. These are groups and we have a full medical committee just to inform you saying it's the, the situation in Europe is a little bit different. We have uh, three dedicated hospitals to post polio, four, five units in other hospitals which are dedicated to post polio. And we have people who actually devote themselves just to it, like Professor Nollett, uh, uh, Karl Borg, Karolinska, uh, Axel Reutz at the Koblenz Institute uh, with his own hospital, which is just post polio. So it's, it's not quite falling off the ladder here. But there is a, also a difference inside of Europe in that if you look at it and you go from Western Europe, in other words, France, UK, and travel eastwards towards the old Warsaw Pact countries, uh, etc., the age profile gets younger. Um, so the ones in Slovakia and such like are in their 50s, whereas the ones in France are in their 70s. So it goes from there. The other one, just for your information, my Rotary Club, believe it or not, is 300 miles from where I live. I am an honorary member of it because I actually used to live there. And that Rotary Club has now taken a whole group of Rotary Clubs in the east of England, club them together and is actually involving themselves with polio survivors on an individual basis and a treatment basis, also including them in and organizing disability games for them. That, that's excellent news, John. I'm so glad that you're here um, and excellent the things that you're doing in your group. You know, looking at your website is is a, is a model for 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 others to follow because you're an umbrella group, um, which is which is exactly and the fact that the, all that activity is going on in your area 
is outstanding. I would certainly welcome the opportunity to have some of us meet with you and, and talk like that if you're open to that. So, um, and find out more about uh, what's going on there. It's, it, it's outstanding. It's outstanding. We'd like to see that model go on around the whole world. We really would, John. That's what we've been trying to do. And we tried to start a international polio fellowship a while back. Uh, it didn't quite work. We ran into some politics in Eastern Europe um, and in a couple of other places. Um, we've, we've also been collaborate. working. Let's collaborate. Yeah. Let's collaborate and see what we can do because we've got a global group here. So maybe that we can help work on making that true. Um, it, what is the website for your group? Can you put it in the chat? It's, I will put it in the chat in a second. Uh, it's actually being completely rewritten at the moment with all brand new content and there will be a brochure on the work of the group. It's being completely reworked. Um, the group, I didn't manage to get to it. As you may tell, I'm actually, I'm apart from one hand, I'm actually totally paralyzed with polio from, uh, from the diaphragm down. Um, so I didn't get to the AGM. It's in, it was in they had it in Prague uh, this year, but uh, okay. I will I will put my I will put the website address up now. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, and if you, um, um, uh, yeah, I forget what I'm going to say, but um, if, if you can't do that, I can certainly post it with somebody. I think it was the website that caused the concern that. Um, because it hadn't been updated for a while. I think that was what there was given the misinformation about your group, so. The, the, Danish, the Danish group unfortunately forgot to pay the hosting fees for some time to the company. Uh, so it um, sort of disappeared and now it's being rewritten, but we'll go, we'll go from there. Thanks, okay. Ken. Yeah, John, uh, John, can you, um, do you know how to set up the screen uh, share on this? Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I'll, make, I'll, I'll bring you back as a host. Okay. Um, Bob, do you have a comment? Bob, you're on mute. There we go. I was just wanted to comment about uh, John Nagy's um, uh, feeling oh. about um, we're Don't. losing the... Uh, communication battle on polio in general. Uh, the new presentation that I've been doing around the world has Doug. been, um, Doug. are you Doug. looking at uh, rotary through the rear, your rear view mirror? And uh, when I get over into um, Great Britain, of course, I, I have all kinds of other issues with uh, colloquialisms and, and uh, uh, it, the boot of your car and all those things that we just don't understand. But <laughs> glad to be speaking pretty much uh, in, in English with you. But um, anyway, that it, it is a real problem, I think. Uh, and, and we've got to keep the communication alive uh, about uh, where polio is. Uh, as I say, we have a, a group of uh, polio coordinators that is about uh, 47 people around the world. And uh, we have a monthly Zoom call with them, uh, which is very interesting. Fortunately, everyone speaks English. And um, we, uh, uh, the, the people, I can remember one of our members in India just uh, wiping her hands of it. Uh, that uh, it, the feeling in, in her part of India is that uh, polio is over with, uh, why don't we move on? <clears throat> I was uh, dressing a, a club in Kansas City and a gentleman stood up and he said, well, why are we talking about this, uh, this uh, ancient history stuff? Why, why can't we have something more current and talk about uh, something more current? And then he used um, uh, like politics and I said, oh, okay, let's uh, <laughs> hold up for a minute. We're, <laughs> we're, Rotary kind of stays away from politics. And um, anyway, it's, it is a, uh, probably uh, one of the um, biggest issues that we have, I think, uh, is just getting mindshare. And, 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 and Bob, as we talk down the road, um, we're going to talk about setting up speakers to go around and do speaking. And certainly we would welcome you to be a part of that group to oh, do thank that. Thank you. Yeah. 
Um, and um, so there's nobody here from the Australian group, correct? It's uh, it's probably 12 o'clock midnight there. I don't know. It's <laughs> yeah. So not a good time for them. Um, and that's uh, so um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to turn this over to Tom. Um, so we're at the point here that we, Tom, and, and you and I have had a little chat, that we need to become something official. We're a committee at this point, but in... In Rotary's, if we're going to ha have Rotary be a partner with us, we need to be something official in Rotary. Um, and Tom and I have worked together in the past. Um, and Tom is, if those of you don't know him, I'm surprised anybody doesn't. Um, but Tom is a, a Mr. Rotary as far as helping groups better understand how to bring in new members, how to as correctly set up your organization, how to correctly run your clubs. Um, he's the go-to guy for that. And those who work with him know him. He's very good at that. And, um, and he has helped us immensely when we set up our, our Rotary Club. So um, I, I've asked Tom and I'm, I'm thankful for him to be here to kind of go through us. Where, where can we go from here, Tom? So I'm gonna turn this over to you to get a little discussion of what you think this group you get a little bit of flavor for what it is right now. So what do you think it would be the best way we can encompass ourselves into the Rotary family? Well, thank you, Ken, very much um, for that wonderful introduction. And thank you to each and every one of you for being here for this most important subject. And I'm honored to be here to be able to talk with you. And Ken is right. Uh, Ken and Jeremy and Ralph and I um, when we were getting together disability group, we had to decide what to do with that. We eventually um, decided with Ken's leadership um, to go with a club because we felt that was the best way for that particular situation because we were able to get global grants. You know, so we have Rotary's vision statement and, um, you know, we have that work through action plan priorities. And one of those, the second one is enhancing participant engagement. Well, Rotary does a lot of wonderful things and it gives us some tools to use, but to have the most impact, really you have to use the tool that works the best. We wanna use a hammer if we need a hammer or a screwdriver if we need a screwdriver. And we have um, some primary groups. We have, um, we, John Nanny was kind enough to mention a Rotary Action Group. Rotary Action Groups are very good when you have experts and they help you um, figure out how to do a project, help fund a project, but they can't get um, global grants or district grants to do that themselves. Um, we have Rotary Community Corps, which go in, and for an example, we started one here last year, where I live, which is middle of the U.S., right below the Canadian border. And I tell you, it's great to see all the people from Africa, people from Jamaica, people from the Philippines. So thank you, friends, for all coming to this so you can help us spread the word about this. So the Rotary Community Corps, we formed one to help Afghan refugees. Well, we have about 120 people that get together, about 100 refugees and 20 Rotarians every other Saturday. That's a particular tool that works well there because you don't have to be a member of Rotary. You don't have to go to meetings, you don't have to pay dues, which helps for those 100 refugees at this point. Um, of course, you know, the action plan talks about participants. So participants aren't only Rotarians, they're people that we serve. They're everyone who's connected with us in any way, whether it be youth exchange or host families. So a Rotary Community Corps works well for some things, but probably not here because a lot of the people that we are serving, the survivors, and we never call them victims in this group. We always call them survivors, right, John? <laughs> um, I've learned from many of you in this, um, in the virtual Zoom, many things. And that's one of the things I learned from John early on. So there's other things that we have, um, you know, and the Rotary Action Groups probably don't work for us in this particular case because, you know, there's only 25 of those worldwide. Fellowships, there's about 80. The Rotary Action Groups are hard to get by, hard to get approved. You know, the most recent one that was approved was the Environmental Sustainability Rotary Action Group that works on the environment. They have experts there. Um, but again, they don't do projects, but those experts help in many different ways. 
we may not, um, if there, if we wanted to be a rotary action group, you know, the most recent attempt to become a rotary action group, or we could call them rags, was plastic soup. And they tried to be their own. Um, and the board of directors in their wisdom decided to put that under SRAG. So if we did that as a group, then we might be subject to the whims of, not the whim, there's all these important needs all around Rotary and we're all trying to do the best. But what this group, this group, is, trying to, um, what this group is trying to do is make sure that people with the post-polio syndrome have that as their main focus. You know, that's why we started the disability group because, you know, the general traditional voter club, um, could we all mute if we're, uh, if we're not talking just so everybody can hear us? Um, and Jacqueline has just joined from uh, Egypt. You know, our traditional Rotary Club, like I'm a part of, we serve many different things. Well, this group wants to focus its efforts on this area. It wants to support the people who are the survivors and who have post-polio syndrome. So when it's all said and done, what we're leaning towards now is not starting a club because Many of us are already Rotarians in the club, and we're going to bring that support to bear in other ways. Not a Rotary Action Group because uh, we have experts, but the majority of this group won't be experts in a way that they'll be advising others. It's more of a support group. And um, we don't want to pay additional dues because most of us are already in uh, Rotary Clubs and are paying dues, and you can't belong to two clubs at the same time. Of course, we have some honorary members here, but that's different. So what we'd like to do is do a short presentation on fellowships. After all, this is um, June is the month of Rotary Fellowships. Um, that's what we're celebrating. So we're going to do that, but we're going to take it with an eye of answering the question, what should we be, and comparing it to these other tools that we have. If that's okay with you, I'd like to proceed that way. So um, can you all see my screen? Okay, I got Dick from Florida. Give me the thumbs up. Thanks, Dick. So Rotary Fellowships. Uh, fellowships <laughs> uh, Fellowships are great um, because they allow us to share our passions with others in an area like that's a hobby or an interest. So we are engaged in our clubs, but this allows us to be engaged with Rotarians in other way. You know, I was asked a question yesterday during a presentation, well, why don't I just form a club? You know, if I'm a beekeeper like Lloyd on the screen here is, why don't I just form a beekeepers club? Well, if you do that, you have to know the beekeepers and they're just in your area. Fellowships allow you to reach out to the whole world. You know, that's one of the great things about Rotary. We, um, as Ken said, we have 1.4 million uh, Rotary, Rotarians and Rotaractors. Shaker would say 1.42 now because we've grown this year. So we can, in a fellowship, reach out to all of them. Um, so that's why we're considering a fellowship for this particular group. And as I said, this is uh, the fellowship month. So fellowships could be anything. There is a fellowship for RV owners. There's a fellowship for scuba divers. There's one for magicians. I guess the most popular one, um, and you know, some of these are free. Some of them you have to pay a fee for. Um, most of the ones that you pay a fee for, it's usually an entrance fee, like the, many of you I see are in the past district governor um, fellowship. You pay one fee and then you're in. Wine fellowship is very uh, important. There's also beer fellowship, <laughs> right, John? Um, it's the most popular one and has the best pin. Speaking of pins, there's actually a pin fellowship. So we have a little bit of background noise. So I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning. I'm uh, sorry, John. Um, uh, um, uh, if, if everybody could mute their microphone, that would be great so that uh, there's no interruption for the speakers. I appreciate it. So Constance, if you could just go on mute for just a minute. Um, and I can't wait till we get to the part where we just talk about and answer questions. In the meantime, if we could mute, that would be great. And uh, John, can you mute Constance? Because I don't think she knows that she's live. So, um, so we have interest, hobby, sports, whatever you can think of, we have a fellowship on it. We haven't even have the flying Rotarians who, um, when I was uh, head of our zone institute last year, uh, one of their Rotarians was getting an award 
um, for flying his plane around the world to raise money for our cause, ending polio. So they all flew in and they had a special ceremony and they were actually at the convention too. So these uh, fellowships, what they do is they don't meet you know, every other week. They don't meet twice a month like most of our clubs do or four times a month like our traditional clubs do. They meet uh, periodically. Uh, the golf um, fellowship actually has tournaments, a few tournaments uh, around the world. Here's an example of a fellowship that is actually taking uh, trash out of the rivers and out of the ocean and making our waters better. And of course, the Pin Fellowship, which I think uh, Dominica is actually in that fellowship, right, Dominica? Uh, yes, I am. I've been in it for several years. I have about 60 pins of, from different parts of the world and different Rotary events. That's that wonderful. One is free. That one's free. Okay, you don't have to pay. So that's wonderful. Um, that's a great fellowship. How many of you are in fellowships now? Okay, why don't you shout out what fellowship? Jacqueline, what fellowship are you in? <laughs> You're on mute, Jacqueline. Sorry. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, we have no uh, fellowship in Egypt. Just inside our uh, Rotary Club, not international. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, and Jacqueline is an expert on starting clubs. She just started a club in Egypt of doctors who have Egyptian descent that are all around the world. It's a very interesting club. So if we have questions about starting clubs, she's one of the people we can rely on here. Lloyd has started some clubs too. So um, we would fit under a fellowship. Um, we could have different events. We can get together. Um, at the international conventions or things like that, and we can support each other. And um, we can also manage to stay involved. That's one of the main things we have, Rotorship, because we want people to be involved. You know, sometimes we're involved in our clubs, but as our clubs progress and we have more e-clubs, sometimes it's harder to get um, together to do service projects from just an e-club. Uh, what e-clubs usually do is they actually have service projects in their local area and they get together and they pick a week to do that service and they all talk about it. So fellowships help us get involved beyond the clubs. Um, and of course, people get together because they share a particular interest, whether it be travel or whether it be food. Um, and there's lots of help to start a fellowship. Now, John brought up a good point, John Nanny did. Um, um, and they were talking about that we, at one time, we tried to form a fellowship before. And sometimes when you try to follow a form a fellowship, a couple of years ago, I tried to form one for people who wanted to start new clubs. And they said, well, we already have an e-club fellowship. Why don't you merge with them? So that works really well. You could have impact merging with another group, but only if you feel that your group's interest won't be overlooked uh, or be a redheaded stepchild to the first group. So, um, you know, it's something that we, we can consider. So when you start a fellowship, you need at least 25 potential members and they have to be from at least five different continents. Looking at the screen today, I don't think this would be a hurdle. I think we can get by um, pretty well without that. Um, without, we can get over that hurdle, no problem. Now, if we wanted to start a fellowship, we need um, some bylaws. Uh, RI doesn't have form bylaws like it does for a club when you're starting, but it won't be difficult to do that. The operating of our club will have lots of, of our fellowship have lots of different kinds of rules and mechanisms, operating procedures, but we don't really have to worry too much about that. The bylaws should be as simple as possible because when you change bylaws, depending on what those bylaws state, there might be a majority requirement to change the bylaws or a super majority. So we would put the main governing items in a set of bylaws, but we would actually do some kind of policy and procedures document for the everyday stuff that we wanna change more frequently, if that's the way you wanna go. And of course, there's lots of resources that are I for fellowships. Um, and you know the application is not hard to do, so. Now I'm actually uh, here to answer any questions. And this is my favorite uh, part of any show because I want you to leave with the knowledge that you came seeking. So just shout out your questions and I'd be glad to, 
to um, answer them. But don't ask me when fellowship started because I don't know that. That was a question I was asked yesterday. I just haven't done enough research since last night to figure that out. If you, if you could put your hand up. Thank you, Tom. If you could put your hand up when you have a question, that would be helpful. Dick has a question. Well, I would just say I'm a member of the International Fellowship of Yachting Rotarians. And we got started back in the early, late 1940s. And, uh, so that's my flag back there <laughs> on the wall. I love it. There's some 3,000 of us. That's fantastic. And it, tell us about how often do you get together and how would we apply what you've experienced that to this group? Well, the, the Rotarians are yachting Rotarians. They, they uh, go to various ports and meet together. So they have rendezvous and uh, all over Europe and uh, Greece and uh, down in the Philippines uh, and England and everywhere. Uh, and so you, you'll have a group that uh, like we have the Tampa Bay Fellowship uh, fleet and we'll, we'll meet at various clubs up and down the, the coast of Florida. So that's how we, we have our meetings. Uh, but it's, and it, it, there's a, a, a great website for it that, and, and they put out a newsletter that's some 65 pages long. So, you know. Well, that's wonderful, Dick. And there's a lot of knowledge in this room and we can pull it out and apply it to this and that would help a lot. So maybe we take what Dick is saying and we have our first one in Delaware and John Nanny hosts it at his club meeting, so we get the knowledge out, but we have it hybrid, so other people, uh, Dominica could zoom in from Jamaica. So let's go with Dominica, then Ralph, and then Bob. Yeah, mine is not really a question. It, it, it's a, more of a comment. Um, Tom spoke at my club meeting yesterday, and most of the were attending, and we had Rotarians from all over the world, um, they didn't really know very much about fellowships, but after the meeting, I was getting WhatsApp messages, and I, I, I'm aware that several of the Rotarians there are now researching fellowships and planning which ones they're going to join. So it, it, I think these fellowships are really great. Thank you. And and thank, I would you very much. thank you, Dominica, very much, and thank you for having me yesterday. And it was because of Dominica I ended up um, at that program yesterday. And I would predict, Dominica, that you will have your own chapter in Jamaica of the Wine Fellowship, the way things were going yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I usually don't make predictions. I'm not a futurist, but that one I could, uh, I could bet on. <laughs> uh, Ralph, then Bob. Uh, yes, I'm on the, um, the Bicycle uh, Fellowship. And uh, I joined it on the year that we were supposed to all ride from Boston to the Chicago Convention. And um, I don't think I've been a very good member because I haven't done much connection with them. But I did do a lot of riding to raise money to, uh, to help cure cancer and actually added up my mileage. And it was enough to ride all the way around the entire world at the equator. Um, and so there's some interesting parts that that fellowship can involve with. But my question is, can we get a list of all those different fellowships? I'm trying to promote that thing in our club. And what tipped me off was the chess playing fellowship. We have an active chess player in our club now. So there is a website. I'm not sure if it's updated that lists them. Um, and I will get to that website. I do have an email into Zuho Sharp, who's ahead of that program, and she'll probably give me to someone else because she does more than just um, more than just fellowships. But she'll probably fix me up with the fellowship person. So I'll work on that, Ralph, and get that to you. But yeah, can you, you can go to you can go to my Rotary and check on fellowships, and all, all of them are listed. Okay, great, thank you. And Ralph, tell us why a bicycle fellowship as opposed to a bicycle Rotary Club. I don't know. That was what was going on in back at mm -hmm. Chicago time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I just joined then and I just been watching their email from time to time, but haven't really, I can't keep up with the Rotarians. They all ride their bikes too darn fast. <laughs> <laughs> from John Hugo down. Yeah. Uh, Bob, you had another. Oh, I, I was just going to ask. Uh, exactly, but anyhow, it's a group. Hello. So they're not they're not uh, focusing on polio anymore. They're moving towards polio, which is good. And I wanted to Diana, please mute yourself. See what they were going to do. What it's all about. Diana Pardon seems me. to be speaking. There she goes. 
Oh, Dick, I was just going to ask you, uh, you know, for those around the world, uh, Nebraska, where I live, is totally landlocked. And um, I am a mem uh, an admiral in the Nebraska Navy. Uh -huh. And it's a uh, real group. Uh, it's something that um, uh, Nebraska gives out. Uh, and I'm just wondering if uh, your group would accept us. Probably. We're, the only, we're very, the only, very flexible. Only, only I mean, thing we, we sail. We, we are chartered the Alice scooters. Springs. We chartered the Alice Springs Australia uh, group for a, a yachting event they had in the middle of Australia in the desert. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Tom. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Janie from Cape Town, South Africa, the Newlands Club was kind enough to put the fellowship link uh, that Dick was talking about. So that's um, in the link. So thank you, Janie, for doing that. Um, and Angela. Rester, you have a question. Well, I was just going to say that um, you were asking 1928 was the first fellowship. And Excellent. yes, the, the link has, um, I, I had put that in, didn't see Janie's yet. Um, you can link, there's actually a hyperlink to all of the uh, fellowships. Um, I'm the chair of our district, have been doing it for a few years. And what I've done presentations, it's actually given people who maybe we're on the fringe of not being overly involved in Rotary. It's given them a, a way to be involved at a larger scale um, in Rotary and in their passionate, you know, their areas of passion like Italian cooking, et cetera. And I did put something in there that July 27th, the Flying Rotarians meet at the EEA convention in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And last but not least, this group might be some that might wanna look at the LGBTQ fellowship as a way to pattern because I'm a member of that and not as an LGBTQ person, but I have nieces and nephews. And so I'm an ally. Um, so it would give a way for people like me who have not experienced polio to be a part of a fellowship as an ally. You know, that's a great idea. And you know, whatever we decide on doing, I'm really glad to see the participants we have here. We have 44 people from around the world, but we have Mian Solomon, who's just been put on the IPPC with Holger, the new member, she's really good at getting the word out when it comes to PI. And then we also um, have Ricky also from the Philippines, who's really good at publicizing that. And we have Floyd Lancia, who puts out a regular bulletin, um, past director Floyd Lancia puts out a regular bulletin of what's going on with polio cases. So these are all people who can help us um, get the word out when we decide if we decide to go with the fellowship. And Tom, uh, can I uh, just reintroduce uh, Angela Rester? Uh, Angela is uh, one of uh, our ENPCs, our N Polio Now coordinators in the Midwest in uh, Region 36. Well, thank you and Angela for all you do. I see Jeremy's got his hand up and then John. Thanks Tom. Yeah, so yeah, I just wanted. Sorry, did I interrupt? Uh, big if I thought Tom called me. My mistake. Yeah, no, it's your it's your turn, Jeremy. Someone's just not on mute. Oh, I see. That's just background. Okay, good. For the sake of effect. Um, yeah, I just <laughs> I just you wanted want to drama. say. Um, previous <laughs> Angela mentioned allies, and I I think that's really important from a concept of DEI. Um, allied ship is essential. Um, and so terrific uh, idea that is to, you know, I suspect most of us in this room aren't in fact, or don't in fact have polio. Um, and, and yet we are allies. And I think it's very important to, to um, raise the issue of allyship. Uh, so I just wanted to reiterate that. Thank you. You know, Jeremy, you're absolutely right. You know, yesterday I was giving my new pin for our new um, community here that we started. And I'm not a member of that community, but uh, you know, I helped start the club. The more people we bring into this, the more people that we're going to be able to help. And you know, John was right about you know we're all getting polio fatigue when it comes to you know we're this close. They taught me in the Philippines I can't do this. I have to do this. You know, <laughs> just like Van said, thank you for teaching us that. Um, but we can't give up. It's like a marathon, and we're at the last point too. And it's the most important. And like Bill Gates said that quote, it's the hardest time, but we have to let people know that. Um, we can't just assume that they know that. John? Yeah, um, 
when my Rotary Club does a four-way test, we uh, have a fifth one. It's uh, have fun. And, uh, you know, when I first joined Rotary, I, I basically was a member of a Rotary Club. You know, the four walls of uh, my Rotary Club, and that's all I knew. And then I got involved with the district and then the zone. And one of the things that has really enhanced my membership as a Rotarian is being a member of 10 different fellowships. And it's, it's not just fun, but it also brings uh, enlightenment of what, um, how you can enhance your membership as, as, as a Rotarian. So uh, I think that's a really good uh, potential for our, our group to go is, is as a fellowship and to piggyback on, on uh, groups like the uh, Polio Survivor RAG group. Um, and I don't think it would be in conflict of that, but I think we can enhance what they're doing uh, and we can do things that the RAG can't do. Um, so uh, I think that's a really good uh, direction for us to take. So uh, thank you for your wonderful incitement uh, and enlightenment of, of fellowships. Uh, and if you can make the slide presentation available, that would be awesome. I will do that through Ken. Thank you. And, and thank you. Yeah, we'll have that recording too of it too, so people can see it. So um, I have a few technical questions for you, Tom, uh, if that's the right term. Um, so people of a fellowship can be Rotarians and non-Rotarians, correct? That is correct. Okay. And we can charge dues or they're not charge dues. That's our choice. Um, yes, that's usually put in the governing document within this case would be the bylaws. Um, you don't have to charge dues, but you can charge dues as a fellowship. And what is, uh, uh, what is, um, what is uh, Rotary recognize a fellowship it is a, a group or is it a nonprofit? It's not a nonprofit. Um, you know, if it incorporates as a nonprofit within a state, within the United States, you can do that. Um, but it's not likely um, to have enough financial transactions where you'd want to file a 1023 application with the IRS if it's US based to get a nonprofit tax exempt status. Um, you know, usually the ones that do events charge more, like the international group of golfers. Uh, they have three or four tournaments. So when you register for that, it's $250 charge. That's one of the most expensive ones. Um, and then some are just free because they're um, electronic based and they don't do a lot of in-person things. Uh, one thing that they would probably want you to do, Ken, is to actually man a booth in the Hall of Friendship at the conventions, um, which um, it is not difficult from the $1,200 you have to pay. I mean, it's a cost but it's mostly trying to get people who would do that. So, you know, having those 25 people, we have to make sure that we have enough of them to man a booth um, at the international convention. Usually if you um, don't follow the rules, eventually you'll get emails uh, from Rotary International asking you to follow the rules. And then if you don't eventually follow the rules, uh, you know, three, four years down the road, you might be asked to um, not be a fellowship anymore, but. I'm not worried about that because this is such a passionate cause and so many people are motivated by it. Okay, so in, in, I appreciate that, thank you. And if we wanted to apply for a grant, would you have to do it through a Rotary Club? Is that how we do it? Um, a Rotary Club, or now you could do it through a Rotaract Club come July 1st. Okay, um, and being um, a fellowship, that gives us the, um, the, um, the right to use the logo. It does. Um, you'd have to be brand compliant in the use of that logo. Yep. Okay. I know the other concern when we started to look at the club um, was fellowships um, and the image of fellowships. Um, a lot of them are um, uh, uh, like hobby kind of things. And of course, this is a very serious subject. Um, and that was just the concern when we decided actually to form a club as opposed to a fellowship. But in, in the eyes of Rotary, fellowships are obviously very respected, right? So if you go to the Code of Policies, starting on page 310, it'll lay out what a fellowship is, Rotary Action Group, you know, everything, all the tools that we have available. Um, 
And, you know, fellowship in a lot of places, and this was true with Jamaica, um, the Montego Bay Club, fellowship is used like we do in our veterans club here as a way to get together, right? Um, but it has an official designation as a group with Inside Rotary. You know, when it all comes down to it, the best part of Rotary is our friendships. And the best part of that friendship is the support. If we're supporting the survivors and the post-polio syndrome people who have that, we would like to be a fellowship. Um, you know, when you think of a Rotary Action Group, Ken, we mostly think of experts who are helping others and advising. But what are we really trying to do? And well, we have to decide that. But if it's to support each other and to support the people who have this, then we should probably go with the fellowship, in my opinion. But of course, I'll help you any way that you think is best. Okay. I appreciate that. And one, uh, yeah, another thing, um, and I know this is a huge subject, so maybe you can just touch upon it a little bit. Um, there is already the Rotary um, uh, Polio Survivors Action Group, um, which um, uh, we, we certainly have a welcome with to be associated with them. Um, and um, there was some discussion about should we form our own action group because we're focusing on one specific thing in, uh, that has to do with polio. Um, can you just touch upon um, somewhat briefly um, why uh, action group is not the best approach for us or, it, or maybe not? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Ken, I, I love coming to speak for you because you always challenge me, right? And you, know, <laughs> you, never ask, you never ask the easy questions. You always ask the hard questions. Um, so, and uh, we have Floyd Lancey, who's a past director, and he might be able to comment. But, um, you know, there's what's written in the policies and there's what really happens. Um, I, and you don't know what's going to happen. And every two years we have, well, every year we have new directors elect to become directors. And um, what I'm thinking would happen is if you would apply for another Rotary Action Group involved in polio, even though it's a different um, expertise and a different emphasis, I would imagine um, there would be some argument that it's cumulative and duplicative, even though it's not, and they would force you into the existing action group. I can tell you, Ken, that Rotarians are good people and they want to help each other out. You know, um, when we started the first ever club to end human trafficking in our district, a lot of people said, well, you know, we already have RAGUS, the Rotary Anti-Slavery, that's where it's called most places in the world, Anti-Slavery Action Group. You know what? Um, I reached out to them with the help of Brian King and Zulu, and we had four of their members join the new club, board of directors join the new club, and another person who writes a newsletter allow me to uh, solicit new members through their, that. So we can get a lot of help with that. Um, I don't think we're in competition. We're all working towards the same goal, um, you know, ending, eradicating polio and helping those who have survived it and are our champions, many of you who are on here. And, you know, you have support. I look at the people on the screen here. We already have people, you know, um, Bob's been kind enough to remind us that there's end polio coordinators part of this. We have me Ann, who's on the IPPC. We have Ricky who's working on this. We have John who's a champion, you know, so many champions and Ina too. We are gonna be successful no matter, it's like forming a business. Do we form an S Corp? And I'm sorry, I'm going on, but this is an important question that's kind of gets to the gravitas, the reason we're having this. You know, do we form an LLC? Do we form a corporation? There's advantages and disadvantages, but if you're a good company, you're gonna make money either way. Can you and everyone on here is going to be successful. We're going to end polio no matter how you form. Um, I'm just giving you my opinion and I'll help you no matter what. But my opinion is after looking at all the tools available, a fellowship would be the way to go. Doesn't mean you have to stay a fellowship. We might, you know, we have to keep assessing and maybe we're better off being an action group later. But I can tell you, Ken, you know how hard it is to start a club. You, it's, it's, it's hard work no matter what you do. There's a lot of people to help you and we can get it done, but I think fellowship best fits and we can have the greatest impact for the people we're trying to serve with that. Now, you know, I know there, I, I was uh, receiving an email yesterday from you where someone was saying we need to be a road reaction group. I was on a call yesterday um, and there is a Rotary Community Corps uh, 
that's in North Carolina that addresses this issue. Um, so there's different ways to skin a cat, but I'll tell you, in my opinion, fellowship is the best. And I think most people would agree with that, but I could be wrong. Ask my wife. <laughs> and, and, and I appreciate, I appreciate that answer, uh, Tom. I know when we were looking at setting up the disability group, we considered an action group and it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to set up. Um, and and it, bec it becomes an independent kind of uh, nonprofit, which can use the rotary name, but basically it's, it's a corporation. Yeah, right, correct. And I think you mentioned to me there are only 25 of them Correct. in existence. So, um, and certainly we would work very closely with the existing action group, polio action group, um, and be proud to be associated with them. So and the question is, how much time do we want to spend on administration? And how much time do we want to send, spend on serving the people yes. who need our help? Yes, um, yes. I rather have John Naney speaking to groups about what we can do for them as opposed to him filling out paperwork and filling out reports. That's just <laughs> yeah, <my> right. <laughs> I'm sure John probably agrees with that. <laughs> Dick, you have a question? Well, only, only the comment that uh, the uh, Yachting Rotarians have fleets all over the world, uh, which are subgroups. So, and the same thing could occur here with uh, local support groups in Cape Town and, and Philippines and, and, you know, everywhere around the world. So you have separate, the ability to have separate committees that do, do, do different things. So it's a very flexible uh, operation. That's a very good point, um, Dick. And, you know, they have a recognized chapters. It's not like the, you know, the new clubs always start friend groups and association groups are with informal, they're not really recognized. But, and, and we'll get to Marianne um, Arnett in a minute. Um, yeah. But uh, Ken, you're right in pushing this forward and trying to get some formality. For, you know, we've heard uh, Ken talk about when we started the disability group. You know, you know I like to say I knew uh, Ken and Ralph and Jeremy, uh, you know, back then. Um, you know, we, because Ken did the work to get us a disability group, that has vaulted, you know, Jeremy Opperman to now he's on the DEI task force. And not just because of that, because I mean, he's, he's brilliant in his stories. And if you ever read his Rotary Voices articles, uh, I just love reading them. Um, and he's a superstar in his own right. But having the formality around this group will give us um, a better voice inside of Rotary, I do believe. Marianne? Well, this, this is Jim and Marianne. Hey, Jim. Yeah, uh, I, I'm a member of the uh, 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 Region 36 uh, task team, work with Bob. But the, my question for you, Tom, is you earlier you said that, uh, mentioned chapters and, and uh, follow up on what Dick said. Could you talk a little bit more about how chapters get formed and how they function within a fellowship? Because I think uh, there's pieces for that. I know here in the Midwest, US, there are lots of, of independent uh, organizations that are actually support groups throughout the Midwest, and uh, we're involved in some of those. And I know they exist all over the United States and all over the world, but could any one of those, like a, a group that always just supports post pillow survivors, could become a chapter of the fellowship, I think. But can you talk about chapters a little bit, please? Yes, Jim, and thank you very much for bringing that up. Chapters officially exist with inside of fellowships. Um, typically, they are in fellowships that are a little bit larger, like the wine tasting. I keep bringing that up as an example because everyone seems to know it. Um, so you could have a chapter, we could have a chapter in each country, we could have a chapter in each continent. Um, in larger countries, the US could have one in each state. So John could have one in Delaware. And then Floyd, director, past director Floyd could have one in Indiana. Uh, we could have one here in Minneapolis. It's very easy to do. Um, it's very good to actually, you know, we have this argument with satellite clubs, Jim, where people say, oh, we have eight of our folks. They're meeting at a separate time. We don't need to fill out the form. Um, but when you fill out the form, it actually gives the chapter themselves a feeling that they are independent, which allows them to schedule their own meeting at their own time, the own way they want to. So it really is good to add that little bit of formality. And it's great to report back to Rotary that we have all these chapters. And then you can have independent competitions. When one chapter does something, the other chapter will try to match it. When you have just one fellowship without chapters, you don't have um, that synergy to move things forward. So thank you for the question. 
Okay, well, hands. Yeah. I, I'm not sure there's any other questions, but um, I appreciate it, Tom, always. Um, you are um, uh, an educator always on, uh, on, on, on this information. I, I, I um, am I'm amazed at how much you have in your head. <laughs> it's just incredible. Um, and um, so we, in order for us to achieve what we need to achieve, we need to go uh, in one of two directions. And, and, I, um, and one is to be a formalized group in Rotary, which is what Tom obviously talked about today. And the other would be to set up our own nonprofit. But I think using the Rotary network would be our greatest tool that we could possibly do to do this. Um, and if, Tom, is there a fee to set up a fellowship now? There is a minimal fee, just a processing fee. Uh, okay. But we can we can get a district or a club to sponsor that. So I wouldn't let that be a thing. Okay, just, you know. that's good. What I'd like to do um, from here is to have a, 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 a I'm not sure we'll call it a steering committee or what. Uh, have another meeting of people who are interested in discussing this further and and taking this a step further. Um, our next actual meeting as a group. I mean, we have plans for many things. Awareness. We have plans for doing speakers. We plan plans of doing videos. We have plans of doing webinars. Uh, we have plans of basically going around to as many Rotary clubs as we possibly can and spreading the word on this and getting involved. So we have uh, many uh, plans that we we want to do. A, a set up a web a website, um, things like that. A lot of social media activity, um, but. I think the first step we need to do is become formalized. So um, our next actual meeting of this group as we are past the hour um, is June 29th at 9 a.m. Uh, actually, uh, the, I had a request to change the time a little bit. I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but people on the West Coast have, it's 6 a.m. when we start this meeting. So we may consider a time change on that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, that would be the next actual meeting of this group. But in between that, I think it's important that a number of us get together and discuss, is this the direction we want to take? And if they, it is the direction they want to take, then with the help of Tom, I'm sure he'll help us get this process started to become what it seems to be the a direction of a, of a fellowship to start with, to become something now formalized in ro Rotary. And then that would give us more, um, more, um, I'm not sure what the word is, um, yeah, focus, people would be focused, Rotary can focus on this better. So um, I'd like, I'm gonna send out, uh, hopefully those of you who are new to this group have put your name and contact information in the, in the, in the chat here. Uh, we'll be sending out um, information on uh, an, a follow-up meeting to this to discuss the process of becoming um, uh, hopefully a fellowship, uh, if that's what we decide to do. Um, and um, and how long does that normally take, uh, Tom? It's just a processing time of usually just a few weeks. It wouldn't shouldn't be more than five or six weeks. Okay. Um, so um, I welcome anybody who was interested in being part of this planning process. Um, and once we have that planned, then we're going to start working on a, a plan to uh, move forward with the first goal of awareness, and that's a huge huge goal to work on. Um, so if nobody has any other comments, um, I thank you. Uh, go ahead, John. The one thing that we can actually help with as well is the fact that we're multilingual. We have, we cover most, well, most all European languages, and we can also get through with uh, uh, Urdu, Hindu, Chinese, Japanese, and the Chinese, we can do Mandarin, Cantonese, and such like. We've got multilingual facilities inside the European group, so we can actually help to spread the word if that's of assistance. How, how outstanding is that? And once again, John, collaboration with groups like yours, the Australian groups, and other groups is going to be a key to all this too. Um, and we're going to all work together globally around the world to, to work on this project. So, and that's call, one of them. Go ahead, call John. on us. Call on us when you need help. I'll keep in contact all the time. Uh, prepared to help with your because I'm actually I am actually a Rotarian as well. 
so um, I can I can help out in other ways. And uh, as I said to you, we can provide speakers, and we've done various other things as well. Um, it's we are much bigger than it appears from that website. Yeah, I'm, I'm much thankful for that. And that once again, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to go work it as a group, a global group, collaborating, all working together with the same message. And maybe we can um, accomplish what we want to accomplish. So if there are no other con co comments, I'm going to um, I'm going to close this meeting and I appreciate you all coming and we hope to see you again on the, on the 29th. Um, I'll be announcement on that. Okay, great. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a great Thanks. Day. Thank you. Okay, have a good day. Night. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Karen, Thank for hosting and organizing. Thank you.